Hi, and welcome to Busted Knuckles. I'm Steve Belair, and I'm your host. We've got a great show planned for you today, so stick around. First we're going to go out and we're going to visit the Canadian Motorcycle Cruisers. They're going out on a ride and we're just going to go out and find out what they're all about. Check it out. Hi, my name is Cliff Graham. I'm the first officer of Canadian Motorcycle Cruisers 023 Winnipeg. Uh, Canadian Motorcycle Cruisers is a social riding club. We accept all makes and models of bikes. Uh, we do pleasure rides uh, twice a week, usually Thursdays and Sundays. Uh, we are a non-alcohol riding group, so there's no alcohol during our rides. Uh, we have kids come with us occasionally, uh, moms, dads, uh, uh, we accept spiders, three-wheelers, whether it's the wrong way or the right way. <laughs> um, and yeah, we just enjoy riding and our Winnipeg group consists of about 200 members, Wow. of which about 60 are fairly active. And uh, we just enjoy being around each other. No, actually. Nice. And you have, uh, I noticed you had some training type stuff yeah. scheduled also on we your do. schedule. We um, do. Uh, every second Monday we do a slow ride challenge, just kind of parking lot uh, challenge. It's based on the ride like a pro. Uh, it's more of a fun outing. It gives you an idea what to do uh, in a parking lot situation where you, uh, the bike's not as stable when you're riding slow. Yeah. And every second Tuesday we have a new rider ride, which could be for people that have been riding a long time but, that, but, but have never ridden in a group before, plus new riders to give them an idea uh, what group riding is about. We use uh, hand signals, foot signals to, that are relayed back in the group. To, uh, if there's a debris on the road or if we're making right or left hand turn, we just pass those signals on. And through. so that, that's when they learn those signals? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, and you also had one that was called a group riding course, like a, or a group a, riding ride, just so. That's our, that's our, our, our new that. rider ride is basically well, that's the same it. Oh, that's, ride. that's it, okay. Same ride, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so are there uh, meetings or? No, we, during the Just tour, the rides. We do the rides in the summer. Yeah. And we actually do a, a meeting in the spring for road captains. Those are the ones that organize the rides, uh, lead the ride, and tail gun the ride. Uh, we yeah. do that every year as a refresher and when we bring on new members who want to become road captains. Okay. Uh, during the year, we have uh, like a wing night, uh, bowling night, um, just Things so you have stuff going through the winter for the year. Keep yeah. social. Right, okay. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if somebody's interested in membership, how do they find you? Canadian Motorcycle Cruisers has a national website. You can go on that. It, uh, you register yourself there. It doesn't cost anything. And depending on where you are, the local first officer will be informed that you've registered and they'll get your name, email, etc. and then you'll be contacted. Okay, so basically anybody who rides can join? Anybody who rides can join. Nice. We've got spiders, we have scooters, we have Harley, Honda, whatever. So you got the Madison on, right? That's the name of your... Madison is our... Yeah. This was designed by an 11-year-old girl, uh, one of the member's daughters, when they first started. That's our... Our insignia, our, our identification. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I read that on what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. All right. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to go out to Morgan Cycle and meet Adrian. He's going to tell us what his shop's all about. Check it out. Hey, well, my name's Adrian of Morgan Cycle Supply. Um, here we restore vintage British and uh, Japanese motorcycles. We also work on uh, modern motorcycles, anything new. Uh, right up to 2019 but uh, you know we do general repair we do maintenance on on your motorcycles uh, ATVs we do and all kinds of small engine stuff um, uh, we're set up to do uh, some machine work we got a mill and a lathe uh, so if you need something uh, a little esoteric we can you know probably help you out there um, 
we rebuild engines here, British engines, uh, Italian stuff, the Japanese stuff. We can build you a frame. We have a frame jig here. All our frames are welded by a certified welder. And yeah, like if you're looking to have a restoration done on any sort of British or Japanese motorcycle, we're more than happy to do it. Uh, we generally do that in the winter time. Uh, we do take restoration work throughout the summer, but uh, uh, not too much of it. Uh, nice. We're trying to fill a vacuum left behind uh, the uh, forefathers of uh, motorcycle repair in, in Winnipeg, right? Old guys like uh, Joe Sautis and Tiny Robbins. Yeah. Old motorcycle, British motorcycle shops and yeah. stuff like that. So. Okay, so this weekend we went out and we watched a little bit of the Manitoba Road Racing Association doing some doing what they love doing best and that's ripping around the track at really high speeds uh they didn't have time uh for an interview because the fellow that uh is in charge had 20 minutes to change his rear tire so he can get back out on the track before the next race but uh, i did get some nice clips of them ripping around the corners and uh zipping down the straightaway so uh check it out
Okay, so now we're going out to meet the ladies of Men's Ruin. Uh, it's a women's motorcycle club. They're, uh, they're very active in the community. They do a lot of really great things. And this weekend they go out uh, for the beaver run and they party because they know how to do that too. Check it out. Okay, so I'm Courtney. I'm part of Men's Ruin Winnipeg. This is Melody, Jewel, Molly. Shelly, and we're here today for the Great Canadian Beaver Run. This is our third annual. Um, usually we have about 50 to 60 women that join us, and it's not just women who ride motorcycles. We invite everybody in the community to come. Um, we start at Deacon's Corner, and we go all the way out to Kenora, which is about a two-hour ride, and we stay at a resort out there that is fully operated by us. to everybody except for males. It's a strictly women's only weekend. So it just kind of is a way to kind of bring women together and empower women. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. This is your third year that you've done it? Yeah, this is our third year. Our first year we did only one night in Kenora and we ended up on the MS Kenora boat and stuff and then we thought it would be cool to do like a whole weekend. So last year we did a whole weekend and it's at the same resort we went back to this year. to Rushing River and then when we come back we go into the door and we have lunch before we head back to the resort. Wow, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's good. I'm sure some of the ladies here are from last year so they could they can probably agree that you know they had a good time and that's why they're back here this year. It's mostly the same girls come every time. Um on average but we have it's so quite much a, fun. Yeah we have quite a few new ones this year because everybody heard how much fun it is, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's wonderful. Anything else you want to add? Well, I guess maybe just a little bit about our club. So our club started just over three years ago. And the reason we kind of got together is to kind of empower women, empower women riders, and be more involved in the motorcycle community. And that's not just with riding. We do events that give back to our community, like women's shelters. And we do Two Wheels, One Heart, which provides bikes to kids that are less fortunate. We do, our first year we did bump it around up under bikes to one community center, Winnipeg Youth Outreach, and then we did multiple single families, usually single moms that couldn't get their kids' bikes that year. This year we did um, two trikes to um, two people with disabilities. One was in Saskatchewan, and this year we actually my hometown in Calgary. Wow! Yeah. That's and, awesome. Yeah, so, and everybody's welcome to get involved in that too. You know, that's how we are able to give back, is by all the donations we get. So, how do we find it? Well, you can look us up on Facebook, okay. uh, Support Men's Room Winnipeg, and we also have a website too, that, because um, we have some work here, so all that kind of money too helps us do our events to kind of um, do fundraising and be able to give back. Home. So, people can buy these really nice purple outfits. You bet anybody can buy it. Oh, is that right? right? Yeah. Okay. What's the website? some shop stuff for you. We're going to go back to Morgan Cycle and uh, Adrian's going to do a carb job for us. Very interesting stuff. Check this out. Okay, so today you're going to do a carb job for us? Yeah, I'm going to clean a set of carburetors for a customer. Okay. Uh, these are already taken off the bike so I can uh, show you how that process, uh, how it works and uh, take you right into it. Right on! So, Anyways, um, I always start by uh, getting into the float bowl just to see what uh, what kind of caca we're going to find in there. Are we allowed to say that? <laughs> uh, I'm guessing lots of green and lots of gel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Green death. 
As a matter of fact, these football screws are a little loose, so uh -oh. they may have been... They might have emptied it. Yeah, someone may have tried to clean it with uh, sea foam or something, and that really isn't the best way to do it. You really have to dismantle your carburetors and... Ugh. All right, have a look in there. That is gross. Yeah, yeah, it's not uh, not a good sight for sure. Oh, that is really, really bad. Yeah, and that's... You can't like, even tell those are brass. <laughs> yeah, let's see if we can get that pin out. It doesn't look like it's going to be easy. We're stocked. <laughs> We also uh, sell motorcycle batteries. Oh, is that right? Yeah, we also sell motorcycle batteries and that comes out of a vendor in Winnipeg. So quite often if they have the inventory, we can get you a battery the same day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, this one's, uh, this one's gonna be a pain to get out. All right, so I'll let the, <laughs> Let that oil do its work and we'll carry on somewhere else. On the other one. <laughs> yeah. More than happy to uh, pick up your motorcycle. We have a motorcycle trailer. Um, and we'll ha we're happy to come and pick up your motorcycle and uh, get it ready for its uh, hibernation period and oh, wow. uh, drop it back off to your uh, to your residence. That we can do for you. It's pay me now or pay me later. <laughs> yeah, well, and and because it's, it's it's much cheaper to prepare it for the winter than it is to recover from not preparing it from the winter. That's right, and you know we're not. Uh, we, we'd rather see you up and running and, uh, you know, enjoying your uh, your investment, right? So, yep. you know, you have to protect it and we're there to do it. You know, some customers, they're mechanically inclined and they would like to do their own work. And, you know, you can bring us your carburetors and we'll clean, clean them for you. And uh, either we can sell you the parts for them or... If you have your own parts uh, and you want to install them yourself, that's fine. We're more than happy to uh, <coughs> get them cleaned up for you. As I say, the best way to clean carburetors is uh, ultrasonically. I was telling you earlier how we used to dip them in the chemicals. But the uh, <coughs> problem with that is, is when you do that, you have to completely disassemble the, the carburetor 100%. Yeah. We do that anyways. We need to get uh, this gasket off. It's, uh, oh, it's a little on the rotten side. Yeah, eh? just just a little. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that one came apart not too badly. As you can see, there's rust in here also, and, and aluminum doesn't rust, so we know where it's coming from. Uh, the gas tank, right? So again, when we're taking apart carburetors, we always check the main jet, pilot jet, and any air jets that'll have, and uh, the seat to make sure that it's the correct size. Yeah. So this one appears to be the correct size. These I know off by heart. So um, we'll just replace the gasket underneath of it. And uh, yeah, as you can see in there, there's lots of white powder in there. It's it's dry gas. Yeah, dried, petrified fuel so and normally when you pour, pull your carburetor apart you want to uh, count how many turns it's set at just so you can kind of have a starting point but again uh, that one was 
right on the bottom, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I could hear it was seated. <laughs> yeah, this one we kind of know where we need to start off with, but... Uh, yeah, they all they all have their starting point. Right? Yeah. See, then this, you want to set it anyway. This needle is uh, corroded enough to where it would need to be replaced. So this this would be the only diaphragm in this uh, setup here. Yeah. So you're just looking to make sure that they don't spin. If they spin, you got to replace them, and it doesn't appear that this uh, vacuum diaphragm is in need to be replaced. Nice. It looks okay. I would put it back into service and uh, perhaps check it again later on down the road. And the other thing too is to check. Yeah, it looks like kind of an expensive part. It is. They are a couple hundred dollars each, Whew. but they are available. Okay. Uh, it's at its second lowest setting. It should have been sure. from the factory. In it would have been one and one up in number three position. So somebody's definitely been screwing with it. Yeah. Well, you know that because the pin was in upside down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't go that way. Okay, and that's plugged solid too, so and there's little small little holes in the uh, needle jet. Right. And it appears to be the correct size. Okay, alright, so other than this, I'm going to pull this float ball <coughs> off. <coughs> Tell us about this little sonic thing you've got going here. So it's an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, this is our small one we use just for carburetors. And uh, so... It's like I'm not a techni techno guru here, but I know that there's little, look like little motors inside there that spin and it gives the... Uh, makes it vibrate. Makes it, yeah, makes it, uh, makes it vibrate there, yeah. So, so where can a guy get one of those? Uh, you can get this particular brand right from us. We're a distributor for our Sonics here. Oh, is that right? Yeah, eh? so you could come to our shop again once we move. We'll be set up. We'll have a proper display set up. And uh, if you want to get a small one for your reading glasses and your dentures, or you want to... Jewelry and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you can put just about anything in there. Uh, and you honestly can uh, get things quite clean uh, with this thing. So, um, you know, we can get you a big one if you want to put a, you know, a cylinder head or a primary case in there. Nice. Or, yeah. All right, so we're gonna, we're just gonna go ahead and do this one just so you guys can see how it, uh, how it'll turn out. Pilot jet, main jet, everything cleaned up. You can virtually put anything in, in these cleaners. It's great. They're, it's 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 helped us do more. As I say, when we used to uh, take a day to overnight to yeah. soak your cars when they're really packed and stuff. Yeah. And they're done that. Yeah, we used to take a cup, like a, a full day or two to get a set of carburetors done where we can get them done now in an afternoon with these machines. So, all right, so we'll, uh, we'll give this about 10 minutes and uh, we'll see what they look like when they come back. Generally speaking, they're good to go on the first time so here's the uh, choke body it looks oh, pretty nice. pretty clean like Sparkly. like it was yeah float ball oh wow so that that's does a nice job yeah I would run this through again I would blast it with compressed air to make sure all the uh, passages are empty or clean yeah and uh, Everyone will want to see this part. So there you go. There's stuff sitting in there. Yeah. It's loose now. Yeah. 
So I would uh, blast this with air and then clean the gasket material away. Yeah. And uh, run it through again. And then I would uh, normally put this through a little methyl hydrate just to get rid of the water. Oh. Yeah, because you don't want water in your carburetor. So right. I dip it in methyl hydrate and uh, the water will dissipate and then uh, put a little carburetor cleaner through it and okay. then uh, reassemble it. That's, okay, so, that's the process. Um, what's your phone number? Phone number is 204-691-7983. And your hours? The hours are in the summer are 9 a.m. 9.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. And most weekends we work, some we don't. We have families too we want to spend time with, but uh, um, throughout the summer we're pretty well open on the weekends and those hours are usually nine in the morning till about five in the afternoon. Okay. Uh, and in the winter time we're open from 9.30 to three. Okay. Yeah, and that generally is uh, November 1st through April 1st. Yeah. Okay. So anytime after April 1st, we're, we're here free till nine o'clock. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And like I said, we're open most weekends, so you just got to call in advance just to make sure we're going to be there. We don't want you to come down for nothing. So. And the address again? The address will be 951 Jarvis Avenue. It's located in the north part of the city, just off of McPhillips. Ah, uh, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed the show, and I hope you want to come back next week and uh, watch the next one. Take care.